So the properties of the material, when we describe the properties of the material, we can use different terms. We can use the term brittle. And you should be able to recognize the material from the graphs, from the stress strain graph. What is the meaning of the term brittle? The brittle material means the object can break down with a no or a very small plastic deformation. Little or no plastic deformation. So object can break, shatter or snap like a ceramic, a biscuit or even a glass. Glass is a brittle material because the glass break down or shatter with a no deformation. So there should be no or a very little plastic deformation. So if I ask from this graph, which is a brittle material? Is it a high carbon steel, a mild steel or a copper? Which material is brittle? The definition of a brittle. The definition of a brittle. That it should be no or a little deformation. Plastic deformation. Which material is a brittle? Is it a high carbon steel? A mild steel or a copper? To be a brittle, it should be a no or a little plastic deformation. So first you check the deformation, which is having a minimum deformation. Like deformation means like change in the length, the strain. High carbon steel is having a smaller deformation. This is a deformation of a mild steel and this is a deformation of a copper. So which is having a little or a no deformation. So little deformation is a high carbon steel. So high carbon steel is a brittle material. The term brittle means that it should not show a deformation or it, sh it shows a deformation, but it should be a little deformation and the object breakdown. So whenever you want to check that you want to work out the brittle material, you check the deformation. The minimum deformation, the brittle material. Is it uh, clear, the definition of the brittle? Next, we have a malleable. How we define the term malleable? Malleable material, which can be hammered or are beaten into the sheets, and it show a large plastic deformation under compression. And so the term malleable means the object deform under compression. Like example, if I hammer something, if I hammer something and I make the shape, I will call that as a malleable. But if I have an object and I apply the force to stretch an object, I will call that as a ductile. So there's a difference between a malleable and a ductile. So whenever we want to check the material is malleable or a ductile, but the difference is that the malleable should be under compression and the ductile is under tensile force. Like when we talk about the uh, material to be ductile, the force must be tensile. Tensile force means to stretch. Where when we talk about the material to be compressed, like when we talk about the material, the force should be a compressive force. So malleable, it deform under compression, where ductile, it deform under stretching. So for both cases, it should have a large plastic deformation. So if I compare, so how to know the large plastic deformation, like this line is indication of the plastic region, okay? So what I have to do, I have to take area of this region. So this is the area of the plastic region for the copper. And this is the area of the plastic region for a mild steel, the total area. Which is more malleable or ductile? Is it mild steel or a copper? So whenever you check the malleability or the ductility, you check the area. So which is having a large area? So the mild steel or the low carbon steel is having a large area. So means it can store or it can deform more under plastic re in the plastic region as compared to copper. That's why the car bodies are made up of a low carbon steel. So in case of a car crash, the 
body will deform and it absorb the maximum amount of energy because when it is deforming it is absorbing the energy so it absorb the maximum amount of energy in a plastic deformation when we talk about the tough the tough means the hardness is actually a surface phenomena for a hardness you cannot work out the material which resists the plastic deformation like example diamond is a hard material so which is a hard material here high carbon steel mild steel or a copper which is a hard material which resists the plastic deformation which does not enter the plastic region because this is a plastic region and this is a elastic region so high carbon steel does not enter the plastic region so high carbon steel is a hard material then for a tough the material which can withstand impact force and absorb a greater amount of energy before it break so example rubber kevlar the, the total if we want to work out the toughness of the material for for the toughness of the material we take the total area of the graph the total area like if i want to check the toughness i will take total area if i want to check the toughness of this i will take the total area if i want to check the toughness of the high carbon steel i'll take the area of the high carbon steel so as you can see the mild steel is a tough material because it is having a large total area as compared to copper and co compared to high carbon steel so when we want to compare the toughness we take the total area but when we want to compare the malleability or the ductility we only take the area after the plastic region so as you can see four different graphs are there a what a is representing a is a brittle material why a we call a brittle because the brittle material shows a, a very little or a no deformation so a is actually a brittle material which is also a strong how we say it is a strong the strength of you can see the maximum stress the uts is higher for a like it need a greater stress to break so a is also strong what about material b b is strong material which is not ductile so it is a strong material comparatively compared to c and d but it is not ductile why it's not ductile because it does not deform plastically that's why it's not ductile c is a ductile material as you can see here and d is a plastic material like why we say it's a plastic material because it has a greater plastic region than the elastic region that's why we say it's a plastic material now we'll do some questions uh, related to this topic i'll share uh, the file just a minute so this exercise is related to the topic uh, materials you can use a chat to answer uh, the first question for mcqs the diagram shows a graph plotted using the results of an experiment in which a metal wire was stretched the gradient of the graph equals to the young's modulus which row gives the correct labels what should be there on the y axis and what should be there on the x axis if we want a young's modulus so the young's modulus look if i take extension on y axis and force on x axis the gradient of the graph is a quantity on y axis divided by quantity on x axis so in that case it will be extension divided by 4 or it will give us reciprocal of the k so that is not correct when we check if force and extension so if quantity on y axis force and extension so that will give us a spring constant but we want the young's modulus if we have a strain on y axis and we have a stress on x axis so strain divided by stress 
is reciprocal of, of the Young's modulus. So it will give 1 over E. Young modulus is denoted by letter E. So it will be 1 over E. But when we have stress on y-axis and we have strain on x-axis, so stress divided by strain, that will give us the Young's modulus. So D will be the right answer. The graph shows how the stress varies with the strain for a given material. Explain what is meant by each term in the fall. What is meant by each of the following terms? The limit of proportionality. So how we define the limit of proportionality? The limit of the proportionality is the last point or the limit till stress proportional to strain. Or you can also say the material obeys the Hooke's law, the limit till which the material obeys the Hooke's law. Or you can also say the force and extension are proportional up to this point. Or because it's a stress strain graph, so you can also use that uh, stress proportional to strain up to this point. The second point, what is the tensile strength? Tensile strength is actually, it's the force, the stress before the object break down or fracture, we call that as a tensile stress, tensile strength. So tensile strength is the force or the stress, the maximum stress or the greatest stress before the object fracture or a breakdown. And the last one is a yield point. Yield point is actually a point at which the plastic deformation begins or a point at which the material show a large increase in the strain for a very small increase in the stress. We can also call that as a yield point. So using the crosses and the letters mark the limit of proportionality and the yield point. If I want to mark a limit of proportionality, so limit of proportionality, the last point where it is straight. So I will call that as a limit of yield point. Because as you can see here, this is a plastic region, like plastic deformation start in this region. So I can mark anywhere I can mark as a yield point. But I advise students to mark when you find that the strain is parallel to, to the graph line, that region you mark the yield point. But you can, it is acceptable. Even I can mark here, I can mark here, I can mark here. It's fine, acceptable because you're not doing the experiment. But the best way, the best point is that when it become parallel to the strain axis, you mark that as a yield point. The top of a toy is pushed down and compressing the spring. The suction cup adheres to the base and hold the toy down. After a short time, the suction cup leaves the base and causes the toy to jump. A compression force a graph is obtained. Explain the shape of the section AB of the graph. So what happened from A to B? From A to B, it means that uh, the compression is directly proportional to the applied force or in this region, it is obeying the Hooke's law. Explain why section CD of a graph is horizontal. Because you're in this case, you're compressing a spring. Like the toy is there, you place a toy and you're compressing the spring. So why the graph like from A to B, it was increasing and then it become constant. So there's a limit to which you can compress. Like example, the, if the spring is fully compressed now, further compression cannot take place, even though you're increasing the force, even though you're increasing the force, but you, you cannot compress, you cannot reduce something to a size zero as it is a matter. So it means that the, the spring is fully compressed or the coils of the springs are no more have space to compress. That's why the C to D, it's, the compression is not changing or the graph become horizontal. Show that the stiffness, stiffness means the spring constant. But in this case, the graph is between the force and the compression. And if I work out the slope, the slope will give us one over K. Why? Because this is a compression and the force. If the force was on Y axis and the compression on X axis, in that case, the slope will give us a value of the K. So how to do this? 
instead you instead of taking a slope you can take any value of the force like i took this value of the force which is 20 and this is 1.9 but this is in centimeter i have to convert into meter so i will divide it by 100 so it will be 1.9 into 10 to the power minus 2 i have to convert into meter so it will be 20 because if i need the value of the k it will be force divided by compression. So 20 divided by 1.9 into 10 power minus 2. So this will move up. And this will be about 10. 10 into 10 power 2. Which is about 1000 Newton per meter square. So if the force was on y-axis and extension on x-axis, I can work out the gradient. But remember one thing that usually the compression and the extensions are in centimeters. So when you're using a graph, don't forget to convert into meters. As the suction cup is about to leave, calculate the energy stored at this stage. At the suction cup is about to leave the base of a compression of a spring is 0 0.08 meter. So it means 0 0.08 meter means 1.8 centimeter, which was here. So this is two, this will be about. So how to work out, we have to use the area under the graph. We have to use area under the graph. So what is the area under the graph? It is making a triangle. As I mentioned, the stress and strain graph or the force and extension graph, area will give us the energy. So it will be half base into height because it's making a triangle. So it will be half, the base is uh, 19. And the, what about the height? It is 0 0.018. So when we multiply them, we'll get the energy stored in this spring. So 0.18, so when we simplify, we got 0 0.18 joules. That's the energy stored in this spring. Next is calculate the maximum possible height the toy will reach. The mass is given. So look, we work out that when this, the spring was compressed, how much energy stored in the spring? It was about 0 0.18 joules. When it released, the toy will move upward. So what is our assumption? The elastic strain energy converted into the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy converted into gravitational potential energy. So it means this was having elastic strain energy. It deformed to kinetic, changed to kinetic and kinetic to gravitational. If there is no loss of energy, so that we can say the elastic strain energy will be equals to the kinetic energy. And that's our assumption. Practically, there will be losses. So elastic strain energy will be equals to the gravitational potential energy. Elastic strain energy, we work out 0 0.01, 0 0.18. And the potential energy is MGH. So we have the mass. We have the gravity. So we will work out the height. State an assumption made in your calculation. So what is our assumption? What we assume? We assume that like there's no loss of energy due to the air resistance. That is one thing. And the energy which is stored in the spring, all energy is transferred. The spring transfer all of its elastic strain energy does not keep any of the energy. That is our assumption. In question four, a spring extended nine centimeter when a force of six Newton is applied, the limit of proportionality is not exceed. Another identical spring joined end to end. With this spring, the force of four Newton is applied. What will the extension of the pair? So first, we were having a, a six Newton force was applied. And that extended, like increased the length 9 centimeters. So extension was 9. Now, 
another spring identical spring is attached end to end and thus there's a force of 4 newton so if there's a force of 4 newton this will experience 4 newton this will also experience 4 newton so we know force and extension are directly proportional so 6 newton causing an extension of 9 centimeter so 4 newton will cause an extension of x centimeter cross multiply so 4 multiplied by 9, 36 divided by 6. So each will have an extension of 6 cm. So this will extend by 6 cm. This will also extend by 6 cm. So what is the total extension of this system? The total extension will be 12 cm. Is it uh, clear this one? Because it is connected end to end. So as I, if you remember the last I explained, the extension will be double. If like one spring was extension six, that if end to end, it will be double. But if they connected side by side, then extension will be half. Which material is having a greater strength, A, B, C or D? Which material is having a greater strength? Is it A, B, C or D? The strength is refers to the maximum stress applied on the object to break. Greater strength. For a strength, you just check the stress. So which one is having a greater strength? A is having a greater strength. And which material has a higher value of the Young's modulus? Is it A, B, C or D? The higher value of the Young's modulus. A, B, C or D? The correct answer is B. Why B is the right answer? Because you check the initial slope. The initial slope of the B is more than A. Because B is starting from here and then it deform. A does not deform. Whenever you want to check the Young's modulus, you always check the initial slope, irrespective of what happened at the last. So because A, B is having a greater initial slope than anyone else, any of these, that's why B is a, having a higher value of the Young's modulus. So you just check the initial slope to check the Young's modulus. So that's why B is the right answer. So these are some questions from the material. Next session we'll do more from this.